Practice problem number one, associated with sample problem C. You can, you can tell that we're definitely getting into uh, more complex problems. Uh, however, we're not going to be doing anything that we haven't already done in terms of uh, resolving vectors into their components uh, and adding components together. That, that's all we're going to do. Uh, and so strap in, try to remember you know, how we've been dealing with components uh, using sine and cosine and tangent, or specifically the inverse tangent function, uh, to solve uh, questions with triangles. And that's all we're going to be doing, just dealing with triangles, so, tr so try not to, to, you know, melt down here. So a, a football player runs directly down the field for 35 meters before turning to the right at an angle of 25 meters from his original direction and running for an additional 15 meters before getting tackled. What is the magnitude and direction of the runner's total displacement? Okay, so uh, I'll say this last. Displacement is a vector, and a vector includes both magnitude and direction. To solve for the magnitude, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. To solve for direction, we're going to be using the tangent function. But here's the issue. This actually ends up being two triangles. What do we do? Okay, well, let's draw it first. Uh, first, let's establish our coordinate system. Uh, so our directions are downfield and then right. So the question is, which way do you want to imagine the field in your head? Do you want the player running this way? Or do you want the player running this way? I don't care. Kind of in, in my mind, I, I always kind of picture football fields uh, running this way with, with the end zones right here. Not, not, not this way. But hey, that's just me. You can establish your coordinate system any way you want. So I'm actually going to say that this positive x direction is downfield. Now, that's going to be very, very important uh, when I go to so we'll disclose my direction, my final answer. Okay. So, uh, ran directly downfield for 35 meters. So that's, again, according to the coordinate system that I have already defined, that's 35 meters directly downfield, right? No angle. But then turns at an angle of 25 degrees from his original direction. Okay, so this is the original direction. 25 meters that, or sorry, 25 degrees that way. So, once we've done this, runs for another 15 meters. So, again, that, it, it's very, very important um, that we we establish our drawing correctly, right? Because this is where we're going to get our, our triangles from. Again, I established the coordinate system. Okay, I said downfield is, is, is that way. And the player is running directly downfield, so it's just straight across. No, no Y displacement in that first 35 meters. Uh, clearly, I have some Y displacement in, in that second 15 meters uh, because I've actually moved to the right of my original direction. Okay, I have this dotted line here to represent my original direction. So it's 25 degrees from that original direction. That's how you know that this other angle is not uh, what uh, what you'd be going with. Right? That angle would be uh, 65 degrees, okay? and that'll totally screw you up if you use it incorrectly. So what I'm being asked to do is get this straight. Um, is calculate the total displacement of this resultant. Okay, that's what I'm going for. Here's my resultant. Magnitude and direction. Uh, the difference here uh, in solving for this resultant magnitude and direction is that this isn't a right triangle, right? This is not a right triangle. I I'm not going to be able to do this without a right triangle or else my sine cosine test stuff was out the window. Uh, it, but all is not lost. If I simply understand that there are actually two triangles, now this might be a little bit tricky because this first run isn't a very good triangle because it's a straight line, but I, I imagine it's very, very easy uh, for you to uh, picture the the, uh, the the second triangle, okay, should be right here. Again, 
it has a right triangle. I'm going to be able to use um, uh, Sokotoa on this right triangle. I'm also going to be able to use Sokotoa on that first triangle. Okay. So let's do it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break both of these movements, right? The first 35 meter run and that second 15 meter run. I'm going to break both of those. I'm going to treat them as separate triangles and break each of them into their individual X and Y components. So this 35 meter run is going to have an X and a Y component. Uh, this 15 meter run is going to have an X and a Y component. And then once I have the X component of the 35 meter run, I'll add it to the X component of the 15 meter run. Once I have the Y component of the 35 meter run, I'll add it to the Y component of my 15 meter run. Once I've added all those, 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 those four things together, right? The X's and the Y's, I'll have a total Y displacement and a total X displacement. I can draw a right triangle with those values. Once I have a right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem and the inverse tangent function just like I normally would. So let's get started. So <clears throat> one of the issues you might have in imagining this is that uh, this uh, it doesn't really look like a triangle, right? Because there's no angle. This actually has an angle of zero degrees. Okay, zero degrees. Again, with regard to downfield, there's no angle. You're going straight downfield. Uh, as opposed to as opposed to moving directly to the left, which would be 90 degrees, right? If the person was actually moving that way, that'd be a 90 degree angle. But, but, but we're not doing this, right? We're, we're straight down field. So that's actually an angle of zero. And so since there's no, there's no angle that moves uh, away from that X, right? No, no angle this way in that first 35 meter run, there actually is uh, no, there's, there's no opposite, okay? The, um, there's no opposite side. Right? As you can tell, there's, there's no real triangle there. There's no opposite side. But there is an adjacent side right? because the angle is zero. So we're going to use um, our skills where we calculate uh, the first displacement in the x direction using the first resultant. Okay, That's the first resultant. And I'm going to multiply that by the cosine of the first angle. Now that ends up being 35 meters times the cosine of zero degrees. Now plug that into your calculator, it comes out 35 meters, which makes total sense because the runner ran 35 meters just that way. And so all of that resultant, that hypotenuse, if, if I'm allowed to say it that way, all of that resultant is in the x direction. So the, the x displacement, displacement in the x uh, uh, direction is the entirety of the 35 meters. Then I can uh, do the y component of this first run. So delta y uh, for the first run. Again, I'm, I'm using the first uh, first displacement, but now I need to figure out the, the y component, which is this way, right? Right, y component. Well. Is, is, is there a y component? Like, no, there is no y component, right? And so I'm actually trying to solve for the, this would be the opposite side. If you kind of pretended that there was a, uh, this was the opposite side, here's the angle. It's the opposite over hypotenuse, right? I'm trying to solve for what this opposite is. So it would be the sine, the sine of zero degrees. So sine of that first angle that ends up being 35 meters, again, because that, that's the first that's the first resultant, multiplied by the sine of zero degrees. And that ends up being zero meters, which makes total sense because there's no displacement in the y direction, right? The, the, the runner is moving all downfield. It actually makes sense. It's weird 
But this is how you mathematically represent something that you can kind of deduce just by, just by logic. But now let's do this second triangle here. Um, so x component of the second displacement. I'm going to be using the second displacement, uh, uh, sorry, resultant at the, the 15 meters. And um, uh, I'm solving for the x component, right? So x, y. So here's my angle. This is the adjacent, right? It's the adjacent. And so that's going to tell me I'm going to use cosine. Uh, I'm dealing with the second triangle here, so I'm going to use the second angle. That ends up being 15 meters multiplied by the cosine of 25 degrees, which uh, two significant figures. I'm going to have to round that to 14 meters. Last thing I need to solve for is that second y component. Again, I'm talking about that second triangle, so that's the second resultant. Uh, again, here's the angle, right? 25 degrees, here's the angle. The y is the opposite, right? Opposite compared to the hypotenuse. Opposite, that tells me I'm using the sine of the second angle. That's 15 meters multiplied by the sine of 25 degrees, uh, which uh, two significant figures, again, two significant figures, 6.3 meters. Now what I can do is I can add uh, like components, right? I can add x1 with x2. I can add x, uh, sorry, y1 with y2. So my uh, total here, so my x total is going to be equal to uh, x1 plus x2, which is 35 meters plus 14 meters, which is 49 meters. My total y component is going to be, you guessed it, uh, the sum of y1 and y2, which is 0 meters plus 6.3 meters, which is, I can do this in my head, 6.3 meters. And so what I end up with, i use some room over here, um, a, a total x component of 49 meters and a total y component of 6.3 meters and to get the to the magnitude and direction of that total displacement this is the resultant that i'm going for okay so just to break down what i've done so far i have the total x displacement and the total y displacement Doing it that way gives me this right angle so I can use SOHCAHTOA, right? And use that, that inverse tangent function, which I need to get the direction. It also lets me use the Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude. I have to have these right triangles going on. So let's, let's do it. So uh, I'm going to go for the magnitude first. So the magnitude of that displacement using the Pythagorean theorem is going to be delta x squared plus delta x, uh, so delta y squared all square rooted uh, <clears throat> ends up being uh, oh sorry left my spot uh, 49 meters squared uh, plus 6.3 meters squared again square rooted uh, that leaves me with 2,400 meters squared plus 40 meters squared, all square rooted still. <coughs> I'll combine like meters, so I have 2,040 meters squared. So I haven't square rooted it. And so, uh, but when I do, to the appropriate two significant figures, okay, uh, I'm actually going to have that be 49, uh, 49 meters. Now that might seem weird because the total X component was 49 meters. What, what this means is that th this angle of displacement um, means that it's going to be small enough that 
uh, this is this isn't properly exactly 49 meters but it's just not uh, a large enough number to round up to 50 uh, 50 meters and we can't add more decimals because again we're limited on the number of significant figures uh, we can we can use here we're limited to two and so it's not it's not 49 exactly okay not at all and you, you'll even remember that this was actually 13.6 had to round it up for two significant figures and, and so in all likelihood uh, this 49 is actually a little bit less than that but we don't know we can't know for sure and so uh, all I'm saying is don't be freaked out that this is actually the same number as the as the x component our, our magnitude of uh, the displacement now we need the direction right so that's going to be the angle that we report we're going to use the inverse tangent function so here's our angle okay there's our angle and we are going to do opposite over adjacent because that's what tangent is so that tells me opposite is 6.3 meters over adjacent which is 49 meters and calculator gives me some stuff but uh i need to stick with two significant figures like i said earlier 7.3 degrees but what's the direction okay what's the direction now back to our coordinate system okay uh we're traveling downfield and there was a turn away from downfield you guys remember that it was a turn to the right okay there was a turn to the right so this move is actually to the right of this original downfield movement. Okay, here's downfield. We're moving to the right of that by this angle. So uh, I guess I could write that as uh, right of downfield. And again, as a <clears throat> as a recap. I have, I have a lot of individual steps here, but I want to remind you, this is something that we've practiced in earlier practice problems. Uh, we're using SOTOA, right? Uh, you, know, it's, you know, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. All right, and, and so that's what we're doing here, and we're just solving for uh, the adjacent side when we're solving for x. We're, so, we're solving for the opposite side when we're solving for uh, the y component. So, so, so nothing's new, but we're synthesizing this data in, in a different way because we have two different resultants that, that we can't describe the overall movement without breaking each movement into two separate triangles. Once we had two separate triangles, we broke both triangles into their individual X components and their individual Y components. Then we added the like term. So we added the two X components together and we added the two Y components together, right? And so once we did that, we, we, had, a, we had a total X displacement and a total Y displacement. Once we did that, we could draw a right triangle and again, use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the magnitude and use the inverse tangent function to solve for the direction. Final answer, 49 meters, 7.3 degrees right of downfield.